in the barn. <laughs> I built the barn and I put an apartment right on the top door. I figured no one else would want to live with me, what the heck, and then I joined eHarmony. <laughs> I found a man who doesn't really want to live in a barn, but he is. <laughs> These are real, uh, whoa, whoa. These are real um, high-end condos. They're selling between 250 and 350 Come on in, So this little park here is where we used to do the majority of the public executions on Charlottetown. The last man we hung in this park was in 1886. 1,500 people, sympathizers, showed up to watch the execution and we watched it. It took three tries. And the last try was pretty gruesome. So after that, we decided to do all executions in private. Last man private the execution on PEI was in 1941. Last man executed in Canada was 1962. We haven't had a crime here ever since. If you believe that, I have a farm I'd like to sell you. <laughs> we are very, very low crime on PEI. It's so small, we're pretty much all related. <laughs> this is the old Catholic hospital. Up until 1975, we have the Catholic Protestant hospital. We now have five public hospitals on PEI. But if I get injured, I find it a hell of a lot quicker to go see my veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, our healthcare system is awesome. and other ways, if I need an MRI, I go on a waiting list for nine months. If Maximus needs an MRI, I can get that done tonight. How's that? This was our first hospital donated to the city by Bishop McIntyre after they built him that big Bishop's Palace. Now that was a 14 room hospital, but they wouldn't let you in if you had anything catchy. <laughs> and when ships came in carrying diseases, they had to fly a yellow flag and then nobody was come out of their house. Uh, that blue one there, that was an old barrel factory built on the opposite side of the Hillsborough River. They hitched nine teams of horses to that and drug it across the ice. So that made Will freeze in the winter. This is where the nuns lived for the Catholic Hospital. That hospital now is that cooking school I talked about. This one here was built 1869 by the widow Loudon. Her husband was a real successful merchant, but very, very frugal. So when he passed away, she built herself a house in the trendy neighborhood. When she passed away, that became the United Services Officers Club, still a private club today. This is a little Navy museum down here. Most of our Navy activity is over in Halifax. Sometimes I tell Americans that's our Navy base. <laughs> For Canada. <laughs> this one was designed by William Critchlow Harris. He designed over 120 churches in Atlantic Canada. And only about five homes. So he's probably the most predominant architect of the day. This one, 1854, had a windmill off the back of the government used the telegraph. When I say talk about those strict, strict historical laws, I give these guys credit because over the last year, they gutted that house without everybody even noticing what they were doing. <laughs> it looked like they were moving all summer. <laughs> these three here, these were built by sea captains, and they were the hoops of Charlottetown back in those days. Most of those are apartments now. Very expensive to heat a home on PEI. We have no natural gas, it's all wood, oil, and electric. No natural gas. Everybody's getting the heat pump. That's the new thing at PBI. And then this one here, that was our first hotel built in 1821, now a private residence. They're a quiet crew. Mm -hmm. So is it true that, uh, do you have furnaces? Oh, yes. Because yep. I know there's somewhere, I don't know where it is, but I mean, they get cold once in a while, but they don't have furnaces in their house. Okay. Well, that ain't here. Okay. Most people, I have a wood stove. 
try get insurance for a wood stove on top of a horse barn, but we did it. Wow. We got one hell of a firewall around it. This is the Supreme Court, but I already told you my joke about how we have no crime here. Yeah. So on PEI, I've never locked my house. I've never locked my car. These wagons sit in the parking lot that's open to the public. And in six years, the only thing anybody ever did was cut my feet. Every now and then they get moved around, but I can see young men getting out of the bar and wanting to prove each other how tough they are. So they try to pull these wagons, but the joke's on them because these have parking brakes. <laughs> so they don't get very far. So James Peake was the biggest shipbuilder in Charlottetown. This was his private home. These were his offices. <laughs> that doorstep was brought over from England. It's shaped like an anchor. Uh, anything built beyond that house is actually all built on landfill, so we're still making land. And these buildings are made out of PEI brick, and you can tell by looking at it, our brick wasn't ever very good. Very frail brick, so they didn't make it for too long. And then this is James Peake's um, warehouse right here. Um, like average rent. So here. average rent in Charlottetown is actually higher than Calvary right now. It's about fourteen to sixteen hundred for a two bedroom. Wow. And that's part of this housing crisis. Right from the 
Attaches it to the rest of Canada. Oh, ready? Up and at him. Are you listening? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, no, I'm. Oh, you listen to Willie, but you don't listen to me, and you can even understand it. Talk as bad as Rhonda. Good boy. I hate it when they ignore me. (laughs) Walk, boy. Walk. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Well, thank you very much for coming on a ride. Oh. I love my job. So thank you very much, and you're more than welcome to come up and meet Frank and 